interrupting others. I'm trying to get the last word in. Just not listening to listen, but listening to answer. These are ways that we listen and um, converse with people every day, but it's not an effective way of listening because when we're listening only to answer the question, we're not hearing what the person says. And so DeVito chapter four tells us about a way of listening where you can listen to actually listen, listen to hear the person, listen to understand what they're saying rather than just get your point across. And so um, chapter four, DeVito page 91 says, non-judgmental listening is listening with an open mind with a view towards learning and suspending judgment. And so when we're suspending judgment and waiting to hear what the person has to say, we're not going, okay, I have to do this right now. I have to get my answer and listen long enough to answer. I'm going to listen because I respect this person. And so that's just one way that we can respect the person and understand that what they have to say is important because we want to be listened to. So we should listen to others. And then the other way of listening, which goes with non-judgmental, is critical listening. Listening with a view towards making an evaluation or judgment analyzing and this may sound like a mean like snarky quick way of listening but it's really a way of understanding and being able to help someone who needs advice or needs um, someone to give them like an answer or something but still with that you have to non-judgmentally listen you have to listen to the full thing not nitpicking little things out that stick out to you and so ways that we listen like this are by um answering simple little answers of like say um saying oh i see or ah oh, that makes sense rather than saying yes or no if we say yes or no then we're saying you're wrong i'm right and so these are judgmental ways to do that and um there's a page on um on lloyd's well-being center on non-judging non-judge listening where they say in order to listen without judging, you have to just just stop and pause. Pause when the person pauses. So if, say, someone's telling you how their day was, do not fill their silence with you speaking. Just pause when they pause and respect their silence, respect their time. And um, there's a page, University of Waterloo, on reading and listening critically. And a way of listening critically is to... Um, find points in their story that interest you, not in a, not in a, I want this to entertain me, but in a, I understand because I have dealt with that sort of thing. And we see a TV show, Boy Meets World, and there's um, Sean and Corey. And Corey is the main character of Boy Meets World, and he's a boy who just deals with um, life's adventures and deals with just crazy things and just living as a teenager. And he has a best friend named Sean, and Sean is kind of a bad boy and he feels like his principal Mr. Feeney hates him and so in this scene we see Mr. Feeney have show the non-judgmental and critical listening in answering Sean and listening to what he's saying and this seems kind of long but let's watch and see why do you hate me so much I beg your pardon I want to know why you hate me so much you think yeah i mean you're always getting on my case well if by that you mean i'm always trying to get the best out of you then yes i'm always on your case but i certainly don't hate you you see sean it frustrates me to see such a charismatic young man so much unfulfilled potential yeah i got you so i'm just another one of your hopeless students I suppose I'm just another stodgy old principal. The stodgiest. <laughs> what do you know about me, Miss Todger? Mm -mm. Oh, like you know anything about me? Well, let's see. Sean Patrick Hunter, son of Chet and Verna, born in Ohio, lived in Oklahoma, in and out of five schools before he was 12 memorize my transcript oh and you love a musical group named the counting crows that's not in my transcript do you know that much about all your students 
No, I don't. So Mr. Feeney shows his genuine concern with Sean and shows that while he does show him tough love because he wants him to do well in school, he actually cares about him. And so um, why we should listen and why we should be able to do this in life is because when we're missing out on that non-judgmental and critical listening, we are only listening for ourselves and we're missing that genuine connection. So um, when we are able to listen in a respectful and um, genuine way, then we make genuine connections and that it allows us to uh, be able to talk to others and just just be a, a kinder, more genuine and uh, more connected person with others.